Hey, welcome back to our video on storage. We're going to break the storage video into two separate sections. This part of our storage video is going to take a look at something called hard drives and RAM. The next video on storage is going to take a look at what we call removable storage. Now this gets a little hairy, so I've got my well-worn coffee mug with good coffee, keeps you awake. So let's geek out now talking about hardware storage. Storage is the ability of a device to retain data either temporarily or permanently. And the reason why I'm making quotation marks, air quotations, is because permanent doesn't really mean permanent. It's not like it's going to be there forever. When we say temporary versus permanent, we're talking about is the information there after you turn off the computer. That's the important distinction. Storage can take either the form of a hard drive, RAM, floppy drive, CDs, DVDs, flash drives, etc, etc. Taking a look first at our hard drive. This is where information is usually stored on a computer. This is where chances are you're storing your information on the computer. Now, cool little trivia for you. This is one of those things that you only want to share with other geeks. Otherwise, again, people will steal your lunch money. But the very first personal computers, the very first IBM computers that came out, did not have hard drives. In fact, when you wanted to start the computer up, you had to put the floppy in, and then put the other floppy in, and wait. I still remember being a little kid, and a friend of mine in the neighborhood, his dad had a computer, and we were going to play Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy on the computer. And if you don't know who Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is, it's like mandatory reading for the world of geekdom. Douglas Adams, great story, great um, trilogy of like four or five books. Yeah, it's a geek thing. Anyhow, I remember him having to not only boot the computer up with floppy drives, but then boot the game up by putting in the drive so that would load as well. Nowadays, if you want to launch a game or turn on your computer, everything's done from the computer's hard drive. I mean, heck, again, even your phone, even your tablets, all that stuff is stored on the computer. You don't have to boot it up from CDs or DVDs to get them to run. The majority of hard drives are magnetic storage devices. They use magnets. It's magnetized. They store data magnetically on individual disks or platters. These platters are made up of aluminum or glass or encoded with a magnetic medium. Now what you're seeing there in that image is the inside of a hard drive. You should never see what that image is showing on your own hard drive unless you want the hard drive to not work anymore. Hard drives are created vacuum sealed so nothing can get in there. No dust can get in there. If you remove the cover off a hard drive, you've killed your hard drive, so don't do that. Here is some really cool trivia for you as far as hard drives go. If you take a look at the underside of a hard drive, you're going to notice another printed circuit board. Remember we talked about printed circuit boards as the motherboard? Well, this is a printed circuit board. This is where the brains of the hard drive are. This is where the information is translated and coordinated between the hard drive and the computer and the processor and all that good stuff. Now, here's a word of caution. Most people, almost everybody, stores important information on a hard drive. There is a saying in computer repair that you can only charge so much to fix a computer because with the cost of computers, if it takes, let's say, $1,000 to fix a broken computer, a new computer is how much money? I mean, it's almost worth buying a new computer. In most cases, it's worth buying a new computer. But data is priceless. Depending on the data, it could be even more priceless early than other data. So for example, if you have images of the birth of your children or pictures of a grandparent that's no longer with you and they're only on your computer and that hard drive dies, you can be charged a lot of money to recover that information and even then there's no guarantee they're going to be able to get that information back. And we're talking sometimes hard drives can go to what we call clean rooms where they can remove the top and there's like no dust in the air. If you ever watched uh, Independence Day, Will Smith, where they're in there and everybody's got the, the spacesuits on and they're you know breathing the filtered air. 
that's a clean room. They are very clean, there's no dust, and if you have to send a hard drive there to get fixed, you're dropping over a K, a thousand bucks at least. So here's the deal though. Hard drives die. It's never a question of if a hard drive will die. Every hard drive dies. It's a matter of when it's going to die. Knowing that the most valuable information you have is on a piece of equipment that not only is going to die eventually, but is the most likely component of the computer to die, where do you keep your information? This is why data backup is so, so incredibly important. You must back up your data. Ideally, you should have a data backup that's off-site. What do I mean by that is you don't want your data to be backed up where you have your computer. So I'm looking at my iMac right now. I'm broadcasting through my webcam, which is right there. Okay, And behind the computer is an external hard drive. The external hard drive holds some information, which if I lose, no big deal, easy to replace. My valuable information is stored online, and I use Dropbox for this. So all my pictures, all my data are safe elsewhere where even if something bad happens at my house, that data is still safe. The next thing that you need to be aware of as a consumer is you don't want to just throw out your hard drive. And by the way, what I've just talked about in the previous uh, slide as far as your data backup and this one are not typically part of an intro class or a BCIS course, but it is important information from a consumer point of view. Okay, So pay attention to this. If you pay attention to nothing else with storage, this is stuff that's important to you as a consumer. If you are going to throw out your computer, now I'm not paying attention in this case to environmental loss or anything like this. We're talking just from a practical point of view, from a computer user's point of view. You don't want to just throw your computer out in the trash, nor do you just want to go get it recycled. In your computer is your hard drive, right? And your hard drive contains information about you. Think about all the information you put on your computer, your banking information, your passwords, um, family pictures, all of this stuff. You don't want some stranger to get their hands on this data. So you have to wipe your hard drive off before you throw out your computer. A great solution to wipe out this information and a free solution is something called Derek's Boot and Nuke, otherwise known as DBAN. DBAN is a free software download. You create a bootable disk and you boot your computer into DBAN. And what it's going to do is it's going to wipe your information. Now, not only is it going to wipe your information, but have you ever written a note to somebody? For example, let me get a pad of paper here. Let's say that you write in your paper, um, hello. Okay, and let's say you're passing notes in class and you write hello. Not that you'd write hello and pass it around in class. That'd be stupid. But anyways, let's say you did that and you scratched it out. You can still make out the fact that I wrote hello on this notepad. So the information is still there. A bad guy can go and recreate this information and pull it off your hard drive. So what DBAN more or less does is it writes another word on there, like uh, A, B, C, okay? And then it wipes it again, and then it might write one, two, three, and then it wipes it again. And it keeps doing that, keeps doing that, keeps doing that until data is very hard to get off of the hard drive. Now, what's really cool in your more secure settings, so for example, as I said in the first videos, first few videos, I used to work for the Bureau, uh, I've done work for the DEA, I've done work for the intelligence community, you obviously, for, for obvious reasons, just can't take a hard drive and throw it in the trash. At the same time, they've got to get rid of them. I mean, you just can't have storage bins full of hard drives. And so what you have in a more secured environment is you have them being magnetically wiped. You have a degausser. Remember, hard drives magnetic, and they have a huge magnetic, and they go whonk, and they're going to wipe it that way. They are also probably going to use something like DBAN, except more proprietary, where they write and erase, write and erase, write and erase. If they really super want to be careful. They're also going to disassemble the hard drive altogether. They might actually put a few plates in the furnace to get rid of them. So keep this in mind. As consumers, you don't need to go to that extreme. But you know what, when I throw out a hard drive, what I do is I run DBAN, and then I take a hammer and bang a nail into part of the hard drive. 
It opens it up to air and dust, and I put a nice nail through part of the platter. So, the next type of hard drive is a newer technology called solid state drive. The cool thing about solid state drive is that there's no moving internal components. The old fashioned hard drive has spinning platters. The solid state drive has no moving parts. It uses solid state memory chips much like a flash drive. Now there's some good and there's some bad. Good is that it's quiet. For example, if you have an iPad or a tablet or a smartphone, you're using a solid state drive. You can't, I don't hear anything running in there, okay? If there was a magnetic hard drive, I'd hear I'm not hearing that. So this is a solid state drive. It's resistant to shock. <laughs> Yay. Think how many times you drop your phone. It's resistance to shock. Uh, thinner than traditional hard drives. Again, if you take a look, I'm pulling out my cell phone here, and I'm pulling out a tablet. If you take a look at these devices, they're pretty thin. If we had the old-fashioned hard drives, they couldn't be this thin. They have a longer battery life if you for a portable. So, for example, we used to have um, laptops, and some laptops still have your old-fashioned drives, which have moving parts. Those consume your battery life faster than a solid-state drive. And it causes less heat, which is kind of cool. Again, no friction, no moving parts. Now, the bad part, you're probably thinking, well, if it's so great, why doesn't everybody have them? The bad part is, is that it's more expensive. So, for example, if you wanted to get a terabyte hard drive space on your computer, a terabyte is going to be a lot cheaper if you use the more traditional hard drives as opposed to the solid state drive. So the price is definitely a concern. The next one I want to talk about is your random access memory, otherwise known as RAM. It's volatile, meaning that when you turn the power off, what was in there is gone. RAM is the scratch pad for the computer. So again, for example, let's take out a notepad. If I told you that I was going to give you five words and you had to repeat back those five words, you should be able to do that. If I said I'm going to give you seven words, you should be able to repeat those back. Average short-term memory for people is about seven plus or minus two. You should be able to do seven. What if I gave you 20 words, 50 words, 100 words? You'd be going, oh. But if I gave you a notepad and let you write down those words, you could remember them. Let's say I gave you a thousand words. Well, this is not going to be enough space. So I give you a bigger piece of paper. This is what RAM is. It's how big is your notepad to jot down information. Your stuff that you load, your operating system, your applications are being run from your RAM. In general, you want as much RAM as your computer can handle. More RAM typically, with some exceptions, means faster computing. Now, that's loaded what I just said, and we don't really have the time to go into that in much more depth. This is just a generality. The more RAM, the faster your computer is going to be, in general. There's also a catch here. From a consumer point of view, there's a difference between memory and storage. On one hand, I just said that RAM is storage. But if you go to Best Buy, you go to Fry's, you go to Tiger Direct, you go to Newegg, you go to Staples, what have you, if you're looking for storage, you're not looking for RAM. RAM, in the consumer point of view, is memory. So when you go and buy a computer, you're going to look at how much storage space it has, a terabyte, two terabytes, that's your hard drive space. Your memory is your RAM. And again, the more RAM you have, the better your experience will be. So how do you know how much RAM your computer can have? Here is a little hidden secret among us computer techs. We have something called Crucial.com. Crucial.com has one of the best ways to find out how much RAM your computer can handle, how much RAM your computer came with from the store, and what type of RAM you should buy. Now keep in mind, Crucial is a memory manufacturer. They're trying to sell you RAM. But they give us this great free utility, even if you don't use their memory, to find out what type of memory your computer can use. So be sure to check out Crucial.com if you're looking for a RAM upgrade. That's a lot of information. Even if you've been drinking your coffee, that's still a lot of information. 
which is why we're going to split this up. And the next video, we're going to take a look at removable storage.